Praise mm-hmm. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for joining Sunday School. Shall we bow our heads to pray? Father, we thank you for the rare privilege to study at your feet and to be taught by your Holy Spirit. Today, Lord, we'll ask like never before you will expound scriptures, enlighten the eyes of our understanding and give us the grace to run. And at the end, we'll have every course and praise to give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you once again for joining Sunday School. We're looking at lesson 40, effective personal evangelism. And I would like you to bow your head. We're going to say a prayer. Can we say, Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to discover through this lesson of ways to be effective in our evangelism, ways to yield results in the name of Jesus, comprehensive ways to be able to yield results in this great commission that the Lord has committed into our hands. Father, help us as people, help us as a church, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today, we will be reading from Mark chapter 16, from 15 to 18. Remember, we're taking the topic, effective personal evangelism. So we'll look at Mark chapter 16, from verse 15 to 18, okay? And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with a new tongue they will, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Praise the Lord. That is quite reassuring. Just what will become if we obey a single commandment of go ye into the world and preach to all nations. Let's see our memory verse, and I would like us to take it together. We have it from Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I know some of us already know it says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone, first to the Jews and also to the Greek. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, first to the Jews, okay? and also to the Greek, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Our introduction says personal evangelism is an act of, just like it implies is an act of a person sharing the gospel with another person, praise the Lord. While there are many different ways we can get across and pass on the gospel of Christ and uh, uh, salvation to people, personal evangelism has been seen over time to be the most effective preaching one at to one person per time. It has been seen as most effective and God calls us, each of us, okay, to, to take upon ourselves this responsibility is the responsibility of every child of God like we have read from our, uh, our Bible text for today that we are to go into the world and preach the gospel. So every believer is charged with this responsibility and God calls us, okay, each of us and bestows upon us different gifts for this particular task. Yet he had given us different gifts, but it's all geared towards achieving one goal, which is the salvation of the souls of men. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians uh, 12, 6 to 7 proves this. It says, yes, there are diversities of gifts, yet it is from one God. And also it mentions that it's for the purpose, okay, of, uh, of edifying the church, okay, of fulfilling the mandate that the Lord has given us. Luke chapter 19, verse 10 says, for the son of man, okay, ha- has come. To seek that, to seek that which is lost, 
is not come for those, you know, it says a, a man who lost one ship will leave the other 99 in safety and go after the other one, praise the Lord. And this is what it is about, going after that particular person, that particular lost soul, because every soul counts, and that is the purpose for which the blood of Christ was shed, to redeem man to himself, okay? He places on us in strategic positions of influence. He places us in strategic positions of influence. He gives us privileges, not just for us to enjoy alone, but for us to use those rare privileges, opportunities to win back men into the kingdom. We have neighbors, we have co-workers, we have colleagues, we have friends, we have relatives, we have people who are yet to relate with the death of Jesus on the cross. And it's in this uh, study today by the special grace of God, we will see ways to go about it, to win those people back to Christ. Remember our memory verse says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, but for it is the power of God given unto us unto salvation, first to the Jews and then to the Greeks. I pray that this resonates in us and we see the benefits of preaching the scripture from where we read in Mark chapter 16. It says that this sign shall follow them that believe. This sign shall follow the children, the people who are obedient to preach the word of God, okay? It says in my name, you will cast out demons. It says, even if you pick up serpents, it will not. It will not harm you. And if you may even drink a deadly thing, it will have no heart will come near you. That is very reassuring that not only have we been given a mandate, we have also been empowered and we also have divine immunity against every art, against every challenge that might come on the course of us uh, doing the work that the Lord has assigned to us. We have two lesson outlines and we're going to, by the help of the Holy Spirit, run through them. And it says, the first one, the preparation phase for every good thing to happen. When we set out for something, if there is no proper preparation, we might not achieve the desirable goal. And this morning we look at, for us, for someone, for a person to have a result oriented, personal evangelism, the person has to prepare. And we have five ways the person has to prepare. Preparation through prayers, okay? The first one I repeat is preparation through prayers, okay? The second one is preparation through righteous lifestyle. So you can say preparation through righteous living, okay? Your life will actually speak. Okay, people will be able to relate. Okay, remember disciples were called first time Christians in Antioch because they saw them acting, behaving like Christ in a Christ-like manner, praise the Lord. And in prayers, the book of James tells us when we prepare through prayer, we pray the fervent prayer of the righteous makes power available because what we're doing is more spiritual than physical. It's and trying to enlighten those in darkness. Oh, okay. so that is why they should come into the light. Praise God. We have preparation through the knowledge of the word of God. The word of God says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. We need the word of God, the word that is able to make us alive, to come alive to the things that we were absent-minded to in the word of life that can cause us to realize that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Preparation through life application. I tell my learners all the time that if we teach and children are not able to apply the knowledge they have gotten to real life situation, God forbid that we might be failing thinking we're doing a job. It goes beyond learning it goes a lot to say that that which you want people to learn, that you are also, by the grace of God, applying it in your own life. They can see it. And then the fifth one is preparation through the right attitude. People say attitude is everything. Okay, the right attitude can cause you to be received or can cause you to be rejected. 
So why are these preparation phases essential? We will see immediately in the B part of lesson outline one, which says the preparation phases, okay? So let's see, why, why is it essential? Preparation through consistent and meaningful prayer life is essential one. Prayer enables the preacher to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, the word of God said unto uh, the disciples, wait, tarry in the upper room till you receive the Holy Spirit. It means that the Holy Spirit was the one who brought boldness, was the one, you know, who, who emboldened and prepared them further for the tax ahead. Okay, so we prayer enables the life of the Spirit to come afloat in our lives, praise the Lord, for us to be able to do that which the Lord has said. And we see that in Acts chapter 4, verse 31. He says, and when they pray in that same place, it shook and the Holy Spirit came upon them and they received boldness. They received boldness to begin to speak the word of the Lord, according to Acts chapter 4, verse 31. Okay, and the next reason why we should pray sufficiently, we should prepare, okay? He says the Holy Spirit brings a conviction. It's not about the eloquence or the fluency of your lines, not at all. The Spirit of God works upon the word of the, that the hearers have heard, okay? Praise the Lord to prepare them further, to help them understand that the reasons or the motive behind their actions was wrong in the first place. By God's grace, we have all given our, our lives to Christ. And we remember that it's not just by the person who brought us to Christ, something nudged us in our spirit man and caused us to come to terms with the message of salvation. Praise the Lord. So the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus, Jesus, uh, to the sinner. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It is the Holy Spirit that brings that perfect understanding to the lost soul, not us. So you see that there is even more the Holy Spirit does when we decide to be obedient and heed to this uh, factor that says consistent and meaningful prayer for us to be able to have fruitful uh, embankments when we go out on personal evangelism. The Holy Spirit releases the right word to the audience, praise the Lord. Colossians 4 verse 6, it says, let your speech Okay, let your speech be seasoned with salt, that your hearers will be edified. We know not what to speak, but the Holy Spirit teaches us what to speak. He says if we open our mouth, he will fill it up. Okay, the Spirit at every point in time knows who you're going to meet and knows what exactly is going on in their life. He knows where to, to, to channel the word and have results. So if you go on your own, in your own knowledge and understanding, definitely you might not be able to hit the bull's eye. You might not be able to get the target, praise the Lord. But the Holy Spirit is able to release the right word. And it is prayers, God will open the eyes of the sinners. He will open their hearts. He will open their eyes. That's called enlightenment, okay? To be able to receive Jesus and see Christ. Second Corinthians 4, 4, okay? It says that the God of this world has blinded them that they are not able to see the light of the gospel. They are not able to relate with the truth. He says the God of this world has blinded them. So it is the work of the spirit, which is a superior spirit that is able to cause the truth to be revealed without adulteration, that is able to unmask their eyes. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Now let's look at preparation 
uh, it, uh, what prayer, the last point on what prayer can achieve, okay, why it's essential we should pray. It talks about courage, it talks about boldness, okay. Acts chapter 4 verse 29 says, be bold, okay. Uh, they were bold, uh, even after their threatenings, they, were, they had received a lot of beatings for preaching the word of God, and they went back to the place of prayer, they cried unto the Lord, and guess what they said, they said, Father, oh, behold their threat threatenings. Behold their threatenings. Please embolden us more. Grant us boldness the more that we may continue to teach your word. So persecution did not keep them down. They went to the place of prayer to reinforce, to be able to do the will of God. Because you cannot speak the truth without boldness. You need the spirit of God to embolden you to be able to speak the, the word of God. Now we go to the preparation through righteous lifestyle. Hallelujah. Okay. First Peter chapter three, verse 15 says, sanctify the Lord in your heart that ye may be able to give answer to every man. The reason for your profession. Hallelujah. It did not say you should engage in profane arguments with any man, but it says sanctify. You know, the word of God says, John 17, 17, sanctify them with thy word for thy word is truth. The more you dwell in the place of the word, the word begins to build and form character in you. And, you know, when, when your lifestyle begins to bear the fruit in like manner as Christ, the mind which is of Christ that is in you begins to mix with faith and begins to bear results that people can identify with. Praise the Lord. So a righteous lifestyle is one qualification. Anyone who wants to embark on personal evangelism and have desirable results should yearn for, should consciously work towards achieving by the help of the Holy Spirit. And we have preparation through biblical knowledge. What you don't know, you can't teach. And if, if you attempt to, there will be hiccups. And if the Lord helps you, it will be no, it does not help. It will be very visible to the people you are trying to communicate to. So it is important that the, the man who wants to speak the word of God is furnished with the word of truth. Second Timothy 2.15, it says, study. It didn't say scan the surfaces. It says, study to show thyself approved, a, a right man, having been furnished with the word of truth, having spent time in the place of study, having spent time that things are clarified by the spirit who is the major uh, insp inspire of the word. Study to show yourself approved. A right man rightly dividing the word of truth. Having a knowledge of the word will help you be able to speak the word in, 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 in perspective. It will help you speak the right word and give the right response at every time. Preparation through your life application. Okay, life application of your salvation. One of the ways Paul was able to get across to people, he begins to tell them, the account of his life, you know, he, he, he says, I'm the chief of all sinners. I had a zeal to persecute the church at one time. He says, I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisee. I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrew. You know, he begins to give an account of himself, you know, so that people will understand that he didn't just drop from heaven and become a saint. He had a background. Okay. Our life, when we are able in humility, because what you were before you came to the knowledge of Christ, sometimes your personal stories can, God can use it by the help of the Holy Spirit to convict a sinner. Hallelujah. The word of God said about the man that was healed in John chapter 9, verse 25. He says to them, whether he be a sinner, I do not know. But one thing I know is that I was once blind, but now I can see. Hallelujah. So we have a history before Jesus came to us. And sometimes referring to those things helps people know that it doesn't matter where you are right now. God is still able to deliver and to save if only you believe. And I pray that our testimony and 
the, the, the salvation, our salvation story, when we use it as the Holy Spirit helps us during our personal evangelism, we will have results in Jesus' name. Amen. Preparation through the right attitude. When the word of God says for everything Jesus did, he was moved with compassion. Praise the Lord. Okay. The word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 to 3, even though I speak the tongues of angels and the tongues of men, and there is no charity in me, I am like a tinkling cymbal. Even if I sell all that I have and I give to the poor and I have no charity in me, it's talking charity in some translation talks about the love of God. It says, then I have failed. Praise the Lord. We must be able to share, the, the, be compassionate when we see sinners and treat them in love. The word of God, you know, is striking what Jesus did to the woman who people, you know, confess that. He, she was caught in the act. Jesus bows down and begins to write on the ground. And he says, if any of you have no sin, cast the first stone. Can you imagine that? So why look on the speck on your brother's eye when you have a log in your own eyes? Praise the Lord. We must at every point in time remember that we need to know that it is not by our works of righteousness that end us salvation. And when we are preaching it to others, we must also come from the place of compassion so that the Lord will work wonders with the words he has put in our mouth. Hallelujah. So now we're going to share quickly. What do you think are the, are, are the dangers? Okay. What are the dangers of embarking on personal evangelism without preparation. You've heard all we've mentioned, the five points. So what do you think, okay, will be the dangers of embarking on personal evangelism without adequate preparation? Before we quickly go to the second outline, can we have sharers? Praise the Lord. Does anyone want to share? Maybe one or two dangers of you know, launching yourself into evangelism, personal evangelism without adequate preparation. You can unmute and speak, praise God. Hallelujah. Do we have people who would like to tell us one or two dangers? Praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. God bless you, ma'am. One of the dangers um, is um, okay. that you'll be embarrassed. You embarrassment. You'll be embarrassed, yes. Yes. So not adequately prepared, you'll be embarrassed. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Okay. If, if there's some other person, we can take that. That was a very good point. Okay. Do we have any other person who would want to share? Okay. All right. So, okay, I would quickly go to the second lesson outline. Creativity is key. Creativity is key. How you share and what you share. We've been given different skills and abilities. Okay. We might not preach the way some people do. Some of us cannot teach the way some people teach, but you should be able to reckon with what you have been blessed of the Lord and with the help of the Holy Spirit, okay? Take uh, 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 initiation steps to use it to profit in the way of evangelism, personal evangelism, okay? We need to share the gospel as the Lord has given us the measure of grace to do and trust if you use what you've been given, it will be enriched further, as we see in the story of the talents. When Jesus gave, the master gave them talents, and we could see how each person uh, was able to give account of his and the rewards they got at the end of the, maximize every opportunity you have to share the gospel with someone because it could be their last time of hearing it. You never can tell. Second Timothy chapter four, verse two says, 
preach in season and out of season. And permit me to even add, preach whether you feel like it and whether you don't feel like it. You know why? Because we have been told that this gospel of truth must go around the whole world. Okay, the whole world needs to hear this gospel of truth before the coming of the master. So uh, the honor should lies on you and I to make sure that this gospel of truth is preached. Give support to every work of evangelism. I know that there are three Gs, either you groan, either you give or you go. So either you go to, to, to preach or either you give to support those who will be on the field, or you groan in the place of prayer, be it personal or mass evangelism, make sure you are doing something because this is what Jesus, this is his heartbeat. This is the center of all that he came to do, to win as many as possible. And it was even a very good coincidence that it is one of the uh, a vision of the church to take a, a, to, you know, preach the gospel and take as many people to heaven as possible. So give it your very best. Take it as a priority and treat it as one. That be it for personal evangelism or mass evangelism, my resources, my effort, whatever the Lord has blessed me with, I will use to make sure that this he requires of us is done. You can even write tracts. I mean, there are people who have been, been blessed so much that when they, are, they write, people, the Holy Spirit can use it to convict a lot of people. You can write tracts. We have gospel musicians. That is another way to you know, minister to souls. You can compose songs. You can produce graphic designs, okay, things, images that go with. Uh, 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 that are symbolic, that can go with some Bible passages that can help lift up the soul and so on, just to support soul winning. And when we do all this, the Lord will help us. And I don't know if anyone also has any other creative ways you think we can actually uh, uh, use to, to achieve effectiveness in our personal evangelism. Does anyone have Okay, does anyone have one or two other ways that we might not have mentioned on the course of this teaching that can help us be more fruitful with our evangelism? Praise the Lord. Thank you. Very you. Well. I yes. also want to talk about uh, intercession personally. We can pray for the unsaved. Yeah, beautiful. That is so apt. We can pray for them. You know, whatever you pray for will not fail. I've just I've come to realize that if you're able to bring it to God in prayer, it will work. It might take time, but in God's appointed time, it will turn around for good. Praise the Lord. So in summary, preparations and creativity are essential tools to achieve personal evangelism, and they should not be taken lightly. Effective evangelism, effective personal evangelism is a veritable tool for soul winning. It is a profitable tool. It's a tool that has been proven over time to be very effective and we must return to it. We must take one soul at a time. And when we do that, the Lord will bless us immensely. Please pray with me today. Can you bow your heads and say, Father, Please let spiritual barrenness cease from among the people of God. Can you say, Father, please let spiritual barrenness, every form of spiritual barrenness in the past, in the present, regarding this assignment of winning souls. Lord, we pray in your mercy that it cease in the name of Jesus. We receive divine empowerment for all you have ordained us to do as Christians, or for all we require for personal evangelism, we receive the grace to run with this mandate and to fulfill it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a week filled with God's blessings and signs and wonders as you go in the might to preach the gospel one at a time. 
in Jesus' name. From the Sunday School Department, we love you. We appreciate you for being with us today. God bless you. Amen. God bless Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Morning, promise Thank land. You. Amen. Thank you, Sister Ezewa. God bless you. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah. A quick announcement. I put it in the chat, though. Um, the people who participated in the quiz last Sunday should please see Sister Moji to collect their, their prizes. Let me quickly read out their names. Sister Lola Kikwelu, Sister Buki Olubenga, Sister Cecilia Olai Wola, Sister, uh, Brother Badamosi, uh, uh, Ola Wale, Brother Akitude SAN, Sister Christy Ekenta. Please see Sister Moji in church for your prizes. Thank you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Buki. Good morning. Well done, ma. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, Sister Buki. Have a nice Sunday. And you too. Good morning, my darling sister Kate. You're yes. blessed. Nice work. Thank God. And you? Uh, fine, thanks. Uh -huh. Okay. Let me check out. <laughs> 